Imagine a country smaller than a single city in America. Yet this tiny place builds fighter jets and missile defenses that the world's superpowers want to buy. How did this little nation not just catch up to, but actually speed past a giant like France in military technology? The story starts with one moment of betrayal that forced them to become geniuses or disappear. Welcome to Winds of Thought. Today, we uncover how Israel, with so few people and so little land, out-engineered France, a country with a long and proud history of building amazing airplanes. This isn't a story about luck. It is a story about pressure. The kind of pressure you feel when your back is against the wall and you have no other choice. For Israel, that pressure came in 1967. At that time, France was Israel's best friend when it came to weapons. Israel's air force was flying French Mirage jets. Their missiles were French. Everything came from France. Then, suddenly, because of international politics, France slammed the door shut. A complete arms embargo. No more jets, no more parts, no more help. Imagine your entire army is about to become useless. What would you do? Most countries would panic. Israel got to work. They decided if no one would sell them jets, they would build their own. They took the French Mirage jets they already had and took them completely apart. They studied every single screw and every wire. They didn't just copy it, they learned how it worked from the inside out. And from that, they built their very first homemade fighter jet, the Kefir. This was the moment everything changed. It was the birth of a powerful new idea. We must rely on ourselves because we cannot rely on anyone else. Now, let's look at France during this same time. France is a huge, powerful country with a brilliant history of engineering. They build incredible machines like the Rafale jet, which is a masterpiece of technology. But their system is slow. It is careful. It is filled with government meetings, long debates, and multi-year plans. This is a good way to build the perfect product, but it is a slow way. Israel did not have time for slow. They had wars every few years. They had new enemies appearing all the time. They faced rocket attacks and threats every single week. So they built a different kind of system. It was fast and messy, but it worked. In Israel, the people who designed the jets worked in the same room as the pilots who flew them. An engineer could turn to a pilot and ask, what happened to your mission yesterday? What did you need that the jet didn't have? And that pilot could tell him exactly what went wrong. The very next day, the engineers could start fixing the problem. In France, a pilot's report may take months to go through the proper channels before an engineer even saw it. In Israel, it took hours. This is what we call a feedback loop. Israel's feedback loop was incredibly short and powerful. Every battle was a test, every enemy rocket was a lesson. They learned, adapted, and upgraded their technology at the speed of war. France's system, while excellent, moved at the speed of bureaucracy. You can already see who would win that race. This difference became even clearer when we look inside the cockpit. This is where the real magic happened. A fighter jet is more than just a fast plane. It is a flying computer. The French are masters at building the body of the plane, the airframe, and the powerful engines that make it fly. They build a beautiful, strong machine. But Israel focused on the computer brain of the jet. They asked a simple question. What good is a fast jet if the enemy sees you first and shoots you down? So they poured all their talent into the electronics, the sensors, the radar, and the targeting systems. These are the things that let a pilot see an enemy jet from a hundred miles away. These are the systems that let him lock onto a target just by looking at it through his helmet. Israel became the world's best at this. They built targeting pods and helmet systems so good that the United States, the world's biggest military, decided to buy them and use them on their own jets. How did Israel know exactly what to build? This is a crucial part of the story. Their intelligence agencies, like the famous Mossad, were not just about spies and secrets. They were part of the engineering team. If a new enemy radar system appeared in Syria, Mossad would work to learn its secrets. They would get its technical details, its strengths, and its weaknesses. Then they would bring that information directly to the engineers. 
the engineers would then design a new jammer or a new missile to defeat that exact radar. They weren't guessing what their enemies might have in 10 years. They were building counters to the weapons their enemies had right now. France had excellent intelligence too, but it wasn't connected to the weapons factories in this direct, immediate way. This gave Israel a huge head start in the invisible war of electronic signals, a war that is often won before a single missile is ever fired. Now, let's talk about how Israel treats the weapons it buys from other countries. When America sold Israel the F-16 fighter jet, most countries would just fly it as it was. Not Israel. They saw the F-16 not as a finished product, but as a starting point. They took it apart and added their own Israeli-made radars. They rewired its computers. They added their own electronic jammers. They made so many changes that they created a new version of the jet called the F-16I Sufa. Many experts say it is the most advanced and deadly F-16 ever built. Think of it like this. France built a jet like a perfect luxury car that comes exactly as the factory designed it. Israel builds a jet like a smartphone. They get the basic model, and then they constantly update the software, add new apps, and improve its performance every single month. Their jets are constantly evolving, getting smarter and more dangerous with every small upgrade. While France was building a masterpiece, Israel was building a living system that never stopped improving. But the biggest and most famous gap between the two countries is in missile defense. France builds powerful offensive missiles designed to hit targets far away. These are excellent weapons. But Israel faced a different problem. They faced thousands of simple, crude rockets being fired at their cities from just next door. They needed a shield, not just a sword. So they built the Iron Dome. You have probably seen the videos online. Rockets flying in from Gaza and Israeli missiles shooting them out of the sky in a spectacular explosion. The Iron Dome changed everything. It wasn't just one good idea, it was the first layer of a multi-layered shield. Above the Iron Dome, they built David's Sling to stop medium-range rockets. And above that, they built the Aero System to stop giant ballistic missiles high up in space. What makes the system so powerful is that all the parts talk to each other. The radars, the command centers, and the different missile batteries are all linked in one brain. It can track a drone from Lebanon, a rocket from Gaza, and a big missile from Iran all at the same time and decide the best way to stop them all. France has nothing like this complete integrated shield. Why? Because France has never lived under the constant rain of rockets that forced it to invent it. Finally, we have to talk about the people, the culture. France has some of the world's best engineers. They are brilliant, careful, and they follow the rules to build perfect machines. Israel has what you might call battlefield engineers. These are people who grew up in a tough neighborhood. They learned to fix things with whatever was available. They are not afraid to break the rules if it helps them find a better solution. This attitude is called chutzpah. It means audacious boldness. In Israel, if a young soldier thinks a piece of military gear is poorly designed, he will probably tell his general exactly how to fix it. That would rarely happen in the more formal and structured French military. In Israel, everyone is encouraged to question, to suggest, and to innovate. This culture feeds a booming industry of defense startups. Thousands of small companies are constantly bringing new ideas to the military. It is a messy, noisy, and incredibly fast-paced world of innovation. France's system is more controlled, more centralized, and much, much slower. So how did the small nation of Israel surpass the giant France in jet and missile tech? The answer is not about who is smarter. It is about a difference in mindset. France improved slowly and carefully. Israel upgraded constantly and rapidly. France built magnificent machines. Israel built an intelligent, adaptive network. France planned for future wars. Israel built for the war they were fighting today. Israel's edge came from turning their greatest weakness, their small size and constant danger, into their greatest strength. The pressure to survive created a culture of innovation that the world has never seen before. They were forced to innovate, and in doing so, they changed the world of military technology forever. If this story of how pressure creates genius was interesting to you, please support our channel. 
hit the like button and subscribe to Winds of Thought. We cover the fascinating stories behind the world's biggest technological leaps. Let us know in the comments which other underdog tech stories you would like us to explore next.